for you. And most in this particular case, we use six gauge on the bottom. It's all 10 foot tall. But they wanted to repaint this old backstop, which is a larger framework. Um, and also the top, the top portion of the fabric was all still attached. So it was in our way, which made it a little bit more difficult to stretch the bottom of it. Typically the bottom of this fence would be stretched in before the, the top, which is making it a little bit more difficult for us to get started because we want this bottom fence to be closer to the, the rail. Okay, so in sense we're trying to retrofit this backstop and get the bottom redone, but the top was already done and it's still up. It's in our way, but we're working around it, so we gotta fudge some stuff to get it done right. Right, Ron, oh, the bar's got to go in first. Yeah. With the Instalink machine, we were able to actually pull it all out and stretch it. And because it's got an arch to it, you can only stretch it 20 feet at a time and tie, you know, and then you're pushing the fabric in to tie it. So it definitely made it easier to stretch and it took all the bulk work off of, a, you know, off the people. We did use the easy twist ties on these, the round ones. We are going to have to bend the bottoms over because it is for a ball field and there's going to be people present, so we got to make sure it minimize any risk of people getting damp or hurt by it. So uh, the top part we won't have to, but yeah, definitely made it a lot easier to twist with the 9 gauge steel ties instead of using a hook tie. The rest of the fence we use a self-locking band for 2 inch and inch and 5 eighths to actually make a size for it. This particular backstop they don't make the particular size for the size of the backstop. So yeah we use some self-locking bands which are much neater, safer and ball fields just enjoy them. There's always challenges I mean, at the top of it but one pretty good otherwise. Kind of keep that angle right on that. Yep. So